Hi, and welcome to Two Tired Teachers. We are coming at you from the south unit of Roosevelt National Park on our way home from Alaska. Now, not everybody would see that that's exactly a direct route from Alaska, <laughs> but we knew we were going to be this far north. We love this park, so yes. we're coming through here. But we need to share some things with you um, if you're planning a trip in 2025 to Alaska. Uh, we, we encourage you to watch our series. Absolutely, please do. We're going to share <laughs> everything in depth. But we wanted to give you an overview because these are things you're really going to need to know before you go um, to make that trip successful. And some of the topics we're going to cover, and I'll put a timestamp once I get the video edited. Yeah. Um, our route, as well as an overall itinerary, general itinerary, road conditions bugs, cost, and uh, repairs. We did have a few minor repairs. And phone and credit cards. So, let's get started. Our journey started on June the 10th. In Central Texas, and I'll show you the map. It didn't change on the way up, it did some on the way yes. back. But essentially, we angled through Wyoming and then to Glacier National Park, Banff, uh, Jasper Parkway, Jasper before the fires there, then up to the Alcan and went up to Whitehorse. And by the way, I try to put maps throughout to show you where these things are because when I was watching videos, not that many people included maps in their towns I didn't know of. But anyway, we went up the Klondike Highway, across Top of the World Highway, and down the Taylor Highway to Toke, and then all around, all of the paved roads basically in Alaska and a few of the dirt and gravel roads. And as far as the journey, we were excited to go to Alaska, but we didn't want to miss anything along the way particularly in Canada, because we'd never been there. But from leaving Central Texas all the way up, yeah, we our, to enjoy every minute. Our philosophy, we knew that Alaska was essentially our destination, but we, we didn't rush to get there. No. Uh, we entered Canada on June 18th, and then we entered Alaska on July 3rd. And we had three things that were on our calendar that we couldn't change. One is we made our reservations at Denali early on. We made them in January. There's so that we were actually sure we a fourth, sort of, and that's reservations at Glacier. We, uh, and we had the reservations at Glacier. We had the reservations at Denali. We had a mission trip that we were a part of, Alaska Missions, and then the Alaska State Fair. We had a two-week window, but you can't yeah. change those dates. Um, but then we were in Alaska two months. And, you know, I was curious what, how long did it take people to do these things. Um, we left Alaska on August 31st. We left the main part of Alaska on August yes. 31st, but then when we went to Hyder, we spent three nights at Hyder in, yes. Hi in Alaska at Hyder. Um, and then we entered the lower 48th, lower 48 on um, September 17th. So we were Canada north for three months. Right. So that's pretty much our, our route home got a little bit uh, out of the way, but <laughs> worth it. That's, that's essentially how long we took. I would say it was a, about the right amount of time. Yes. Um, I mean, we consider this our second little vacation <laughs> <laughs> on our way home, um, but we were able to go and see and do the things in Alaska we wanted to. We had a lot of downtime just to enjoy the wildlife yes. and nature, um, and yet we didn't we were driving pretty, you know, consistently. We would have a few down days, uh, but I feel like it was a good pace for us. If we're the first videos you're watching about Alaska, there's something you need to be aware of, and that is frost heaves. They are 
like inverted speed bumps. Except I was the a speed bump I think of as being like about a foot long. No, these are it looks kind of like a roller coaster at times. Yes. We started encountering those a lot more in the Yukon and Alaska, a little bit in northern British Columbia. Um, our rule of thumb as we were going, um, we, I was driving around 50, 55 miles an hour just because I wanted to have time if the roads were good and paved. There were times, the only roads, let's get to this, the only roads that I would say were really bad. <laughs> and I'm not going to say they were impassable because we passed yeah. them, but we took them 20 miles an hour and sometimes slowed down to 5 and 10 miles an hour. And that was from the, from the uh, Canadian border to Chicken. Alaska, on the top of the World Highway. Um, the first three miles is paved. It's 28 miles. That was great. The next 25 took us about three hours. Uh, we took it very, very slowly. We did see a few car parts or RV parts yes. at the side of the road. So we just took our time and um, and we made it fine. Then the Taylor Highway, once you get to Chicken, you hit the Taylor Highway going down into Toke. <clears throat> And most of it, you were on frost heaves. And it really looked kind of like a roller yes. coaster. Uh, but if you're taking it slowly, you have no trouble. But it was not the second worst. The second worst <laughs> is from Toke. Toke. And once again, I'll show you the map here. Toke back to Destruction, Destruction Bay. Bay. And once you've been in Alaska, you kind of get used to frost heaves. You get used to going from pavement to gravel to pavement to gravel. There are a lot of sections like that. And you get used to stoplights on the highways. But uh, the section from Toke to Destruction Bay, they th threw in giant chug holes. <laughs> I mean, giant chug holes. So you need to be going. Yes. If you see that it looks like the road may be not great, you need to slow way down because um, chances if you are come upon isn't. those, if you come upon those hard, you're, you, it'll do damage. Um, but that section, I would say, was the only part of paved roads that was really yeah. bad. Yeah. Um, like I said, paved roads, if the conditions appeared good, I would take around 50 miles an hour. If, they, if we were changing a lot from gravel to, to pavement, 35, 40 miles an hour, you know, you just not don't get in a hurry. Uh, but most, and the other thing is, when it says highway, it does not necessarily mean paved. Uh, we drove top of the World Highway, which is gorgeous, from Dawson City to Chicken. It's a paved highway, but it's a good paved highway. I, I mean, it's not paved. gravel. Gravel highway, but it's a good gravel highway. We had no trouble there. Uh, the Denali Highway, we did not drive the entire way. We drove eight miles on it from the west side, um, and yeah. parts of it were not as good as others. Right. Um, it's a very popular Jeep uh, road. Yes. So, uh, as long as you're taking your time, um, you, it, there are some that you just can't see, but we were not in a hurry for any of that. But overall, many of the highways, and there are times I'm standing out in the middle of the highway to show you, traffic is not a huge <laughs> problem. It's not like downtown Dallas or something. These are, you know, one lane going each direction. Um, sometimes a shoulder, sometimes not. But overall, the highway we drove, we drove up was the uh, Alcan or the Great Alaska Highway. We drove the Cassier back, and they're fine. Yeah. One thing we forgot to mention about roads, and that is when there's a rough spot, most of the time, the vast majority of the time, in Canada and Alaska, it's marked. It may be a cone at the side of the road. It may be a sign that says bump. Or in Alaska, there's kind of like a little zigzag symbol that means that it's a rough road. Um, if you're getting up there early, early, they may not all be marked. But for the most part, where there's a place that could damage your vehicle, our experience was they were marked. Let's talk bugs. 
in Alaska, you're going to encounter some that you may not have encountered before, and they are wicked little no sims uh, because there, you don't see them. Well, usually. there are some other places we just probably didn't know what they were called, but we really only had one place where we were just swarmed, yes. and it was awful. And thankfully, it was very early on. That was at Dawson City, um, which is in the Yukon. And what we learned from that experience, it was a beautiful place we found. Uh, it was on a river, mm -hmm. but the highway curved around, and then you went down, and then the other side came up. But we had trees on both sides of that, and what we found is it, when there's not as much breeze and there's foliage nearby, the mosquitoes were swarming. And, and, and the, the no, no seams. seams. Uh, that was where we just got eaten alive, and it was awful. And so after that, we looked for very open places yeah. to park, and that helped. Didn't completely eliminate them, but it definitely it helped. helped. So uh, are there bugs? Yes, but you can uh, help to mitigate and people in Alaska jokingly say their state bird is the mosquito. <laughs> and um, so, depending on where you're camping, you may have more of an issue. Yes. Depending on how breezy it is, etc. Okay, we are going to show you the spreadsheet of our cost. I will show you the overview. And what I really want you to focus on is, uh, will be the Canada, Alaska, Canada. Yes. Because we were just visiting with some people here who are from Washington State. Well, their cost in the lower 48s yes. are going to be a lot different than yes. the people we met in Alaska that are from South Carolina. Yes. Uh, so, looking at the cost from Canada to Alaska and Canada. That's going to be fairly similar for anyone who's traveling. What we did not do is, we didn't eat out. No. Um, we feel so much better when we're traveling if we eat what we're used to. Now, I love to sample the local cuisine. And once again, I bought a few things that are not included here, but that's because it came out of my money and not the travel money. Mm -hmm. um, at uh, Talkeetna, a little town, I bought a uh, reindeer Polish like sausage. I think it was 10 bucks at the state fair. I bought a bison polish sausage for 11 bucks and a bag of kettle corn, a big bag of kettle corn for 10 bucks. But by and large, we, um, we ate what we're used to. A huge money saving tip stock up before you leave. Yes. On canned goods, uh, any kind of. Uh, it fro we cooked a lot of meat and froze meal-sized packages uh, of our meat, etc. And if you have an Aldi in your town, even though you may never shop there while you're at home, you might want to consider if you have storage room either in your uh, tow, vehicle. tow vehicle or in the RV itself, you might want to consider stocking up, carrying cases and cases and cases of vegetables. Yeah, I think we started off with around 10 cases of canned vegetables, yeah. uh, which helps keep down our cost yes. of the trip because those canned vegetables are like double yes. <laughs> in Canada and Alaska. Um, <clears throat> we did not include here our excursions or other Souvenirs. trips, etc., like that. We're going to have a separate video showing you kind of an... We, it, throughout the series, you're going to see us going and doing these things. But as an overall, we want you to see how much stuff we did. And our total on that at 300 and I believe it's $14.50. $200 of that is we each have an out-of-state Alaska fishing license annual. So we cannot say enough about how many free things yes. there were that were so much or very inexpensive that were so much fun and um we had a great time and to us if we had done more it would have distracted <laughs> um and we will go on and say the most expensive thing we did was the one we were most disappointed in and it wasn't expensive <laughs> obviously 
One thing we forgot to mention in the video was about cost, and we did not spend much at all on camping. Most of our camping was free, dispersed. Repairs. Uh, one of the videos I watched before we went, I really liked what they said. Um, and they said, had we towed 10,000 miles in the lower 48, we very well may have had this many repairs, if not more. And so our repairs were all minor. Yes. Um, our first night, we, uh, we, we have a water filter that we just put on our kitchen sink. We try to remember to take that off every time. Well, we hadn't, and it broke the faucet. I mean, it, it the rings, you, we couldn't do anything with it. The water didn't come out straight, so mm. we've got faucets, and I replaced faucets <laughs> uh, on this trip. Um, the um, We had a light that I knew was going out, so I had bought a spare to carry with us. A different light went out. <laughs> Ultimately, the one I thought would. So carrying a couple of extras wouldn't have been a bad idea. No. And folks, that's a uh, positive and a negative wire. Yeah. It's no big deal. Um, it was an easy repair, but something we needed done. Pigtails on our propane tank. We are f we've been filling up a propane tank every two weeks. Yeah. That's just pretty much what it's been every two weeks. And so that's been a lot of taking the cover off putting the cover back on, the cover kind of jostling as we're driving. And it wasn't just that it had come loose, but it was leaking. I, I, you know, put the soapy water on there at a joint and I, yeah. I, I couldn't do anything with it. Fortunately, I had actually put those pigtails on because it had a little regulator on it or a little uh, dial on it to show the percentage. And so I had the old ones, which were actually new <laughs> with me. Uh, so I was able to do that. Um, a couple of other minor things, uh, I can't even think off the top of my head now what uh, they were, but understand you're going to have some of those things. Uh, one thing we were not expecting, and that's mold. Yeah. Oh, I had a screen that I had to put the stuff back around, but especially August. Yeah. Uh, August is starting really to become autumn in Alaska. Cold autumn. <laughs> And so there's so much condensation in the RV. Uh, we bought chamois uh, at Walmart, and that has helped tremendously, yes. being able to get the moisture yes. off of the windows. But uh, when we get home, we have to take everything out, wipe it down really good. And wash it. And wash it. And, and yeah. then uh, all of the screens, we're going to have to use like a toothbrush to scrape those, etc. So that was something that needs to be done when we get home, but something we hadn't exactly looked for. But thankfully, we've had no major repairs. If you watched our preparing for Alaska video, you know we tried to, uh, a rock chip kit, yes. you know, different things that we had to hopefully help us through. Okay, something we had not expected because we had prepared for was problems with our phone and our credit cards. We have Boost, which is a more inexpensive carrier. Uh, it works great most places in the U.S. And our travels, we've not had yes. any issues or concerns, but we've not left the U.S. And we called them before we left, and they put us on an international plan for Canada and Mexico, Alaska. And we did not have a lick of phone service in Alaska. When we got to Canada. In Canada. <laughs> and so... But to compound that problem was when we got, we called our bank before we left home. We actually went into the bank yes. before we left home. Told them we're traveling, we're going to be in Canada, we're going to be in Alaska, we're going to be gone for a Please period don't of time. Please cut mark off our cards. Yeah, mark, mark that these charges are going to be okay. Um, they got the Alaska part. Well, at, because when we called, um, well, we didn't have phone service. <laughs> So we get to uh, Canada and are trying to buy gasoline. On June 19th. And well, we'd got there earlier, but we're trying to purchase gasoline and that credit card wouldn't work. 
So, and by the way, very, very few places in Canada take Discover card. And so fortunately, Mylena had another card. Um, there were a few places we found that took Discover, not many. Um, but by the time we realized there's a problem with, we, we have a joint account. We don't yes. live together. We each have our own separate money. We just put money together for trips. And neither one of our credit cards were working on that account. Well, by the time we found out, we're two hours time difference. The bank was closed. The next day was a holiday. Um, it was... We were several days where money was kind of... We didn't an have issue. It. Yeah. <laughs> We bartered with American money on a grocery store. Um, but it was, uh, that's not a fun part, but we got through it. If your phone does not work in Canada. We encourage you. We encourage you. Go to Walmart. Whether you shop at Walmart or not, go to Walmart and tell them you want Lucky. That's an off-brand Canadian phone. And for a month, it's $31 Canadian money. But... At least this year, yeah. they're giving you a $25 Walmart gift card. Yeah. So for $6 a piece, we each had a phone. Now you're yes. changing phone numbers. So you have to text your family and friends yeah. and say, hey, this is me. <laughs> this is my Canadian number. Then we got to Alaska and we didn't have we didn't. Our boost number didn't work. The Canadian number didn't work. So we had an at and <laughs> And they assured us it would work in Canada. Folks. When we came back, guess what? As uh, soon as we got to Whitehorse, which is the, the real city, um, we went back to Walmart and said, hey, we need Lucky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so for $6 a piece again, we got a different Lucky phone number and um, used it on our way home. And it was so sensitive. The border crossing at Hyder, <laughs> we had service like... 12 feet past the Canadian border. Yes. And then it stopped. It would not work in Alaska. So, um, I had no idea it would be that close. But just throwing that out there, if your phone does not work, there are ways around this. Uh, we're back in the lower 48. We have our old phone numbers. We're doing great. But those were some things yes, that were... we didn't expect that. That we didn't expect. And then speaking of things we didn't expect... Um, you do not, and, and, and there are places, states in the lower 48 that do this as well, they do not give you any grocery bags. I don't think anywhere in Canada gives grocery bags at all. Um, you carry reusable, or we really went a lot without bags because we were bringing it out and putting it in the RV, yes. so we didn't need the bags. Um, and then another big thing. Canadian Walmarts are not the same as American Walmarts. They are... They have a relatively small grocery section. Uh, <laughs> like two aisles, maybe. Yeah. Uh, not much at all. And then, if you are purchasing water bottles, <laughs> which I know many people that's taboo, we drink the water bottles, we reuse the water bottles, we recycle the water bottles, so we really don't have a problem with these disposable water bottles. But if you're buying a case of water bottles. How many times can I say water bottles? They charge uh, a a fee for the bottle. They, it, there's a recycle fee or something. And so uh, the first time I went to buy some and the price suddenly doubled, I asked, what's the deal? And she said, oh, well, that's the deposit on the bottle. And I said, there's a deposit? And she said, yes. And I said, then where can I get my deposit back? Because I had a, you know, I had a big bag full of bottles out in the van ready to recycle. <laughs> Where can I get my money back? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, and then the same thing with cans. If you're buying canned soft drinks, yeah, because they charge a, a, re, a deposit on the, those cans as well. The price on that was like, wow, can you believe this is so much less and the dollar's less in Canada than this is a great price. Well, no. <laughs> and, and that's something... It's not a perfect amount, but when I was doing figures in my head, I would just multiply it times 0.7. And so occasionally get a, a calculator out and see what is this in American money about. And that gives you a pretty good ballpark of, yeah. of what you're looking we at. We want to close with this, and that is a year ago, as we were asking people who had taken an RV trip to Alaska, 
what is your overall takeaway? And it is? Go. If you get a chance, go. Don't hesitate. Go. It is a trip of a lifetime and something that uh, we've taken tons of video. We encourage you to watch our videos, everybody else's. But it we cannot will. compare to to being there and seeing the magnitude, the vastness, the amazingness of God's creation. But we could not have asked for a better trip. Um, and so these were just some things that, like we said, if you're looking at going that you're going to want to have now rather than yes five or six months at the end of this series, uh, you're going to want to know this up front. But folks, the journey is so much fun, and we hope you join us with it on. The journey is so much fun, and we hope you join us on it. Thanks for watching, Two Tired Teachers. And next week is going to be episode one of Alaska on a Budget.